Hi everyone, welcome back, Sam here, and today I have something a little bit different. So there are many things that I continuously see that people are having issues with when they build a city. So I'm going to go through maybe five different tips that you should really avoid. Now these tips are something that are practiced in my job. So um, I do work as a town planner. So a lot of you don't know that I work as a town planning consultant, which means a lot of people developers will present their design to me. And basically my team will review it and say, is this good? Is it not good? How can we improve it or blah, 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 things like that. So the tips that I'm going to be mentioning are both good for in real life cities for real developments but they're also very good for in the game as well which uh, which i'm sure a lot of you guys are going to uh benefit from the most so there's several different ones now i plan on doing lots of different videos like this in the future but these are just the first five with many many more to come and also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. And also, my Instagram is down there if you want to get in contact with me. So, the first one is Road Hierarchy. Now, this one is probably, it's one that I thought was very self-explanatory. Everyone would know this, but I, I see that it's really not that known for a lot of people. A lot of people ask, how can we fix... How can you fix my city? And I see the exact same thing. So when I say road hierarchy, just make sure that when you have larger traffic, obviously you're going to need more lanes. Um, you're going to, and then as the traffic gets less and less, you downgrade the road. So obviously the inner areas of a, like a suburb would be these smaller type roads here, which have only two lanes. So one going one way, one going the other way. And then I like to use the four lanes as a connector to those smaller lanes. And then as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you eventually go up to six lanes, eight lanes and things like that. And a lot of you guys, uh, I see this, it's very, it's a very continuous issue that a lot of you have because you'll show me your cities um you'll like send me a picture on instagram or on steam or something and it's the same thing continuously you have for example a road like this which is six or eight lanes but instead you'll have it only for two lanes and it's just super compact and dense and it's not working good at all so make sure that you have the right road capacity for the amount of traffic and if you're not sure which road to use just go through start from the bottom and work your way up so definitely if you have traffic don't use this one so maybe you can go to the four lane and then if that's not good enough then you can go up to the six lane or you can just keep going to the eight lane or who knows maybe you need a highway so just keep that in mind and also one other thing when you have larger roads like this if you have a big intersection that's very very busy and you're not very familiar with doing time traffic lights an easy alternative is to just do a roundabout and a roundabout is very very efficient i've done a whole other other video about roundabouts and you'll notice that i use them a lot so the second topic that i want to talk about is highway connections now if you're familiar with my channel i use a lot of roundabouts for my highway connections and this is a very very common practice in real life urban design if you go onto a map next to the highway you'll probably see a roundabout on either side and that's really just to help divide up the flow because if you have for example a just this road going straight through here and then one giant intersection that is going to be a really really big nightmare especially if it's a lot of traffic coming off the highway so a roundabout is an easy alternative because a roundabout doesn't need traffic lights even though they go around slowly it allows for a more continuous pace around and around whereas with an intersection you have traffic lights whereas one so one so one road will go first and the next road will go so there's still waiting time so that's why a roundabout is more efficient so if you do have a big intersection a roundabout is definitely the the alternative and I'll, I'll link the roundabout video that i made above so you guys can check that out so the next point that i really want to talk about is the proximity between each intersection on a road so you really really want to avoid having intersections really close to each other now i'm just going to draw this quickly just to show you guys so for example if you have one there another one there look at the space in between each one it's very very small so what happens is imagine that you're driving along here you have to stop drive stop drive stop that it's just super annoying right it's really really annoying and look it's it already builds up traffic 
a lot because they can't just go straight through they have to drive stop drive stop and it, and, at, and at each intersection they have to wait which is just super super annoying and if this road was a lot more busier this would be a major nightmare now all of these things that I'm mentioning you can probably get away with doing whatever you want on smaller towns and rural areas but everything I'm talking about is is more for in larger city areas and main busy roads so you want to avoid having intersections really close to each other so for example a good space between could be like this size like this okay guys so the fourth point that I want to talk about is still on the road topic because roads are very very important to the whole flow of your city so the next point is about connectability between roads. You don't want to have one single road going to an area. So for example, if we look at this town here, I don't know what it's called, but if this one only had, let's imagine one road. So let's imagine this road going in. That is not a very feasible choice. So you want to have as many different connections coming in. So you can see I have one, two, three which connects up to the main road and then I also have the train line as well so you want to have as many different connections going in because if you just have one connection going to an urban area that one main road is going to become very very congested everyone has to rely on this one road and for example in real life something that's always in my mind is what if there's a crash on that road that really holds up everybody because there's no other way to get around they have to go on that one road what if they had an, an alternative road to go there wouldn't that be a lot more easier so traffic could be diverted and it's just so traffic is a lot more spread out between the whole area so this area here they if they want to go along the main road they can this is the faster option or if they want to go through the town they can go through there or if they want to go through this back road to this industrial forestry area they can go there as well so you want to have as many different road options as possible but don't don't overdo it of course still make it look normal like don't have a million roads connecting out everywhere because then that's not going to be very good right so and then if we look at another example over here so for example this road has this road going so this area has this road that goes along there like that and then it also has another main road that goes along there like this uh, we have so this peninsula here we have two main roads so for example this one that goes along here like that and then we have this one that goes along there like so and then we also have the highways going through everywhere um, and then you have different roads going this way you have roads going that way so it's really really great just to have it split up so I did the same here as well so this is one main road going along there and then this is another main road going through here okay you guys the fourth point is public transport availability yay so you don't want to just have one bit of public transport going through your area because then that one bit of public transport is going to be so heavily used it's going to be your only bit of reliable source to get to another suburb so of course this isn't going to apply to all areas but I'm speaking for more of um, dense urban areas so for example in this area over here I believe there is a bus line but there's only one or two buses so a lot of the people are relying on this train here which you can see a lot of people are waiting so you might want to incorporate as many different public transport options as possible but without going too crazy so for example in a city in general you have trains you have buses you have you might have a subway you might have a monorail um, and then I also have the funicular train in this city I also have the I don't think I put in cable cars but definitely you need to have a good variety of public transport sources so even if it's just maybe two or three different bus lines so there's this bus line here so maybe you could do a bus line that goes on this side as well so instead of just having one which makes it super super dense yeah so for example like this bus here there's only one so there's a large group of people waiting um, the buses aren't very frequent out here so maybe it's good to have an express bus line uh, that goes from point A all the way to the other side of the city at point B um, and then you might want to have one that goes that every single stop so just so just keep that in mind you like to have different options available which makes it a lot more easier for people that don't have a car and so the last point is in regards to your industrial areas now industrial areas create a large amount of congestion because there's a lot of trucks there's a lot of vans and there's also a lot of people who want to go there to work so put all of those together is going to be there's going to be a lot of people 
so what I always encourage you to do and this is something that is encouraged in real life a lot of the time you don't want to have one large industrial area in your city a lot of cities have one area but they've managed to divide it up into even little clumps of industrial space so if I go to my zoning and I'll show you guys very very quickly so let's start over here so first of all we have this industrial area here and then we have another one over here we have one here and we have some over here as well if we go over to here there's another industrial area split in there so there's, a, there's actually two areas so there's this little one there and then there's one that goes along the main road and then if we come over to here so there's another industrial area there and then there's also this farming industrial area and then there's this little clump of far, um, industrial and forestry area dividing the industrial areas up basically spreads it out throughout the city making it a lot more accessible for people in different areas of your city so for example if you had all of your industrial area only on the north side of the city then everybody in the south has to drive from the south through the city to get to the north and just imagine all of those people try, trying to get there at the same time trying to get to that industrial area um, everything is going to be congested, your public transport, your roads, the pathways, it's going to be very, very full. And plus all of the trucks for the industrial areas, all of the vans, all of the cars, they're all going to be situated in that one area and everything is just going to be super, super compact. So the best alternative for that is to spread it all out, uh, which basically, like I said, makes it a lot more accessible, a lot more easier and just spread out so there's less uh, stress on the different facilities and infrastructure on your city now like i said at the start of the video these are both applicable to real life cities so they're things that i would recommend when people come to me at my work um, and then it's also something that is applicable for in the game as well so that's probably what you guys are going to utilize it mostly for and just like i said earlier this isn't going to be the only video like this i'm going to do so there's definitely so many more different tips and things that i would like to mention and get that out for you guys so i hope these tips helped you guys if you're not fully convinced that they work that good maybe just go try them yourself and just see so i'll just wrap up very quickly so you want to avoid having close intersections you want to make sure that you're using the right road hierarchy choice um, you want to make sure that you have very easy highway entrance and exit uh, choice so th that's usually through roundabouts which is what I recommend um, the next one is make sure that you have various public transport options which is going to be very very beneficial and then also the same for main roads so make sure that you have a good variety of road connections to get to different areas so that's all for you guys i hope you all enjoyed hope you got something um don't forget to leave a comment below and a like if you want to see more of these videos and um yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all soon bye guys